back to Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today from Brittany Venti. This is probably one of the most popular videos in the last couple of days or last month or so because of Abba and Preach. So I really wanted to get into this video. So please like and subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate that. Let's get to that chow. It's Chow Time. Oh, that means- All right, you got to go, man. You got to go. You're wild. Right. There are 10 K oh. viewers. <laughs> this might be your platform, but respect okay, people when they come Okay, 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 goodbye. Go, go, go. go. Yeah. Call everyone bro. Bro. Don't so that's why she's angry. Get out. Get out. Get the out. Get the out. Get the, get the, get the out of my it's showing how similar fresh and fit and uh <laughs> pearl is. <laughs> get out. <laughs> That clip you just watched is of Hannah Pearl Davis, a 26-year-old YouTuber, the latest addition to the manosphere, often referred to as the female Andrew Tate. Pearl runs a... It's weird that people call her the female Andrew Tate. Like, <laughs> they aren't really like that much alike. YouTube channel centered around the manosphere, hosting some of the classiest women our society has to offer. Right, let's go there. You want to go back in the past and embarrass yourself again? Do you go want to scream? Go is this what again. you want? Let's scream. go! Pearl's channel is... You know, it's kind of sad because there's a lot of black women. I'm just, we're just laughing at black women at this point, but it's just like... <laughs> it's funny to me because it's black women are going on the show. They know like the sh exactly what the show is and still make fool of themselves. Heavily inspired by Kevin Samuels and Fresh and Fit. Women in general, especially in the United States, England, whatever it may be, are not held accountable for their poor decisions. Men are trash. That's common in society, right? Mm -hmm. Women are trash isn't. Men are held accountable all the time, every day. All these women are born with value. They're pretty already. As a man, if you don't make yourself valuable, you have no value. Women are born with value. Men must create their value. A guy doesn't lose his value just because he picks the wrong woman once. Just if men are attracted to youth, beauty, and fertility. It's been that way since the beginning of time. Men, men value purity and youth. Purity, youth, beauty. You can really get those brain juices flowing as you tune into yet another episode of the groundbreaking discussion what's wrong with modern women which are about as thought-provoking as an episode of jerry springer or alternatively if that gets boring you can tune into an episode of why men cheating is actually okay right men really have to work to become attractive that's why i laugh at y'all when you tell me well men shouldn't cheat and they shouldn't do this men have to bust their ass to become attractive to even be seen what if a woman cheats i totally disagree with their assessment of cheating and just being a high value man just because you have the ability to cheat does not make you it's so that you should cheat or it makes it right that you cheat you're still like in a sense lying and men of integrity wouldn't be lying to their wives to cheat on them you know if they are in like a you know a polyamorous relationship or whatever the fuck they call it then it's a different story but if a man is married to a woman it doesn't matter how high value he is or how rich he is once he breaks those vows his integrity goes down that's it can men accept that she belongs to the street you don't think it's different for men and for women cheating no i actually think that like women like to be cheated on but pearl didn't always have these takes in fact she used to say the polar opposite especially about fresh and fit who she is now emulating i know a lot of girls that actually waited till they were married and stayed a virgin until they were married and i can tell you that the guys on fresh and fit podcast would never they would never be able to pull a girl like that it's interesting considering that Pearl's current branding revolves. I do agree with her on that one. Just how abrasive, fresh, and fit are. Like, there's, they don't have as much class as true old money. It's around telling women that their standards are too high and that if you want a high value man, that you have to tolerate him cheating. People think I'm condoning cheating, people think I'm encouraging cheating. No. Like, I think if a woman cheats, she's trying to leave you. If a man cheats, yes, yes, he's yes. Just. Like it's, it's like, it's like a handshake. Yeah. <laughs> Women act like this is the most unforgivable thing. It's an awesome ass handshake. He is the ultimate bad guy, the ultimate demon if he does this. I'm sorry, sometimes you contributed to it. And women take no accountability for that. And that he this wants is, to go to true. the bar with his buddies because you make that shit a hell hole. Because you are so unpleasant to be around. And that man forgives you for all of that shit. 
But you can't forgive him for stepping out once? Twice? Again, like, they make it seem like cheating is, like, part of men's lives, even though they're, like, because they're high value. It's not. There's a lot of high value men that don't cheat, like her father would be one, right? And it's like her father said, just to deal with one woman is already hard. To deal with so many women, it's it's ridiculous. It's not worth the money for most men to invest into. You guys are you guys are crazy. Uh, it's just a little cheating. No biggie. I think it's safe to say that Pearl has changed her business plan in order to make money off of the manosphere because people's opinions That's don't why normally they call her a change grifter. so drastically in morality, especially in such a short amount of time. Now me, I'm I mean, I admit I changed throughout my life when I was younger. I told you guys like I was blue pilled. Like even though my dad was hardcore pretty like conservative like str like strong like kind of almost red pill kind of guy my my upbringing with high school college and my surroundings was very blue pill so i'm not selling anything based on what i know through observation her particular target audience is a male this is where Pearl's content and marketing sits. She is constantly hitting pain points and triggers. The challenges and the pain points for her particular customer, client, and fan is not being heard, not being seen, not feeling valued, and not having access to women. So she talks about this constantly, right? And she's talking to women, right? Women which this particular customer, client, or fan does not have access to and wants access to one way to draw in this particular yeah. customer is to continue to hit this customer's pain point over and over and over and what's up with those modern women am i right boys pearl even <laughs> talks about this business plan in an interview with yahoo news saying that she didn't know what her business would be yet but basically that she wanted to be an influencer and build a brand the plan? Make money off of single men on YouTube by regurgitating their talking points about women back to them as a woman. Solid business plan. I feel like when plan, men love it's women, it's, well. like, it's like women have more conditions for them to be like really in love. For a man to love a woman, she does not have to jump as through as many hoops and meet as many requirements as for a woman needs to love a man. Just like Fresh and Fit, Pearl spouts a lot of the same double standards that promote sociopathy, especially in teaching men to have destructive behaviors. I agree. Most men always get looked upon like they're not a hoe. Why is it different well, for women than it is for men? It's easy for us to get sex and men getting sex is hard mm -hmm. so if they do what's hard it's mm -hmm. valued if we do what's easy it's not i am so enlightened by pearl teaching us how being a man will magically eliminate all of the consequences of cheating you know like breaking your trust with your partner by lying to them getting another woman pregnant that you now have to support humiliating your wife causing family dysfunction and bringing home disease. The man cheats. Yes, yes. It's like a handshake. Mm -hmm. That is one hell of a handshake, Pearl. Well, and promoting awesome promiscuity is a great way to help create the single moms that her podcast actively speaks out against. Their amazing strategy is they don't want to pass on resources to another man's kid. I have a, I have a kickback on what she's saying. What was Pearl saying and what she's saying, yeah, it's somewhat true, but... It's mostly the top tier men that are running through most of the women. Not not very many of the average men are, are getting the, that chance. So I do agree, yes, it's just a very select few men that are running women's numbers up like crazy. And most of the rest of the men just don't have access to them. Yeah, like okay. that's why that's why they're repulsed by hoes. That's why they're they're repulsed by like other people's children. If single motherhood should be avoided, then perhaps Pearl should consider not contributing to the problem by promoting promiscuity to her male audience. If you're smart like Fresh and Fit- You know my guys, my stance on it. Uh, don't be a hoe. I mean, you know, you're gonna have fun. Just don't be a hoe or Pearl, you can just reframe promoting sociopathy to men as advocating for them, even if the only thing it does is promote dysfunction and make more men lonely by fear-mongering them. No, I, exactly what I feel what her, her, her show does is make men more angry because the more women that come on, the more women that fit, the, fit those stereotypes, the more of these men are like, yeah, see, 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 they're just, they're everywhere, they're everywhere. And 
tell you the truth in my daily life and in my dating life i actually don't meet like these extreme of modern women's you know they're like a version of these women but a lot more tamed and then again i date quite a few asian women so asian women are just slightly different also them about relationships i feel like a lot of men have a good reason for yeah. for avoiding marriage today i love it and so even and even um you can, a woman can seize your assets even if you're just living together it varies from state to state i know the chat but it's like if she leaves her stuff at your apartment for like a period of three months she can literally seize your assets we are just warning you of what female nature is you're probably wondering by now where is pearl's ring well, I'm here to inform you that Pearl is single and unmarried at 26 Damn. years old. And the reason I decided to go to therapy is because um, in the next like five to seven years, ideally, you know, um, some things are out of your control, but ideally I'd like to be married. Which, according to her, is because she is too picky. You're single over a certain age, you're probably too picky. And I say that it's because she's too picky because she claims that 28 years old is pretty old to be getting married. What do men value? Third thing men value. She about youth. to hit the wall. How are they getting youth when the average age of first marriage for women in the US is 28.6 years old? Pearl is lucky if she can get married by 28 years old because she's 26 and even if she met Mr. Wright today, you would still usually have to be engaged for at least a year and then usually people, if they're going fast, wait another year before getting married, putting her at 28 years old if they're going fast by today's standards. And Pearl doesn't have much long-term experience in dating either. According to this interview on Yahoo News and what Pearl says online about her dating experiences on various podcasts, she's only had a couple of boyfriends. If you can do the math of her being 23 in the Yahoo interview, they couldn't have been that long considering she just turned 26 in the past couple of months. And that got me interested in knowing who is Pearl picking considering that anytime a guy does something wrong, no matter what it is, she tells women to simply just pick better. Okay, so then <laughs> you pick guys that cheat. I discovered that last year. That's the part where I think it's, I guess women do need to pick better. But men are, are running game on these women. <laughs> and men have learned a high degree of game nowadays. The, the men that can run that kind of game, they're running it hard. And when you're a woman that wants a family, that wants a relationship, and you're hearing the things you want to hear, it's hard to sift through the bullshit sometimes i mean i still admit like it is somewhat their fault but us men are pretty fucking ruthless when it comes to pursuing women too pearl tweeted about a breakup she had so i decided to go ahead and check the archives and it turns out that pearl actually got catfished by an obese man with two children on tiktok baby when did we start dating yep that's right an obese man with two children on TikTok. He looks and so I point young. out that he he's like obese face. because Pearl is constantly dunking on fat girls. Why do I need to look at your roles? And then I have to go on social media. Then boom, whale. All right, ho, ho, ho. I agree with her. I don't want to have to look at all these roles too, so... <laughs> Whale. The cherry on top is that Pearl has been pretty adamant about men having children being a deal breaker for her. For me personally, I don't, I'm not into the guys with kids. It's not my thing. Instead of immediately breaking up with him for hiding two whole children from her, she instead takes him in to live with her and her family to mooch off of them. Because he, you know, he was homeless when I first met yeah. him. So I like moved him into my parents' house yeah. so he could get an ID. Too. yeah and so my Show parents put it. him like on our lease oh so that was how like and they like moved him in for like he lived with us for, like, that's crazy month. meanwhile pearl is out here humble bragging about her bagging a rich one on podcasts oh, he, he was a millionaire too. like it was just like he didn't know what to do with it. How did you never millionaire? He was on social media and I saw he lived like kind of close to me and so I made like videos saying like oh we should like hang out what? like have you never seen those videos of girls like shooting their fucking women man just make videos of hey we should just hang out like fuck man like so easy for them <laughs> shot tech guys no like, publicly i was on tiktoks and i did a video saying you know when he's not doing this like comedic bit he's actually kind of kind of fine like 
I live in Chicago. You live in Chicago. We should like hang out. I am pretty confident that Pearl is referring to well, her ex Wanya big. in these instances because Wanya is from Chicago like the millionaire ex she talks about in the video. There are multiple articles saying that Wanya was homeless when he was around 22 years old. There's a small chance that I'm wrong, but it seems that the story does match up. I do find it funny that Pearl dating Wanya, or people know him as Angry Reactions, was framed as her bagging a rich one. Meanwhile, he actually moved on to date a more attractive redhead, and she's still single and unmarried. It seems like her advice on lowering her standards to get married isn't working out so well for her. Pearl has the absolute audacity to tell women to pick better when she literally got catfished by some girl's obese baby daddy on TikTok. Oof. Yeah, he has a lot Damn. of followers, but Ruthless. he ended up having to mooch off of her anyway. So. Yeah, 27 Not million Not only does she regularly dunk on obese people, even taunting them in her TikTok bio before she got banned, but Pearl will even put all the blame on women for obesity in America, despite half the obese population in America being men. How can Pearl dunk on fat girls so often? No, I think it's more obese women than men. I wouldn't say if it's 50-50. Often, considering that she has clearly neglected her own self-care. This video of her is only Ooh. from one month ago, Ruthless. and it might surprise <laughs> you to learn that she's a professional athlete. And despite her lack of self-care, <laughs> she still likes to spout a lot of statistics about fat women, despite being corrected on this by Destiny on her live stream. There's a lot of fat people. Mean, fat no, people women, stay with women, fat people. But women by and large are fatter than men. No. Women, and if you go in the U.S., the woman's always fatter. The BMI. So in the U.S., the average BMI for a man is 26.6, .6, and the average BMI for a woman is 26.5. Oh, I stand corrected. But even after he corrected her, she continued to misrepresent this. That was if women are women are bigger than men. No. Oh well, yeah, there is big sized men, but like as an average, there's more bigger women than men statistic how can we say that as a whole in the u.s and the west we're good wives when 80 percent of us are overweight and that's the number one thing that men value there's a lot of room for improvement with western women 70 percent. i wouldn't say it's the number one thing we value like she could be slightly big and still take care of us drain our balls nice to us take care of the household most men are still happy with that none of us are overweight the average man makes more than the average woman but the average woman is fatter than the average man. So in the U.S., the average BMI for a man is 26.6, .6, and the average BMI for a woman is 26.5. Oh, I stand corrected. Hi, everyone. This is me in the middle of editing. Pearl got banned off of TikTok, so I've had to go into the Internet Archive to pull up the timeline for you guys because I can't prove it on the live site. But you can see she's wearing the same top that she talks about the false obesity statistic. And you can see the date here is 314. Destiny corrected her much before that, so just wanted to show proof of that. When I was doing research, I also happened to have made a note about the timeline because I had a feeling that she was regurgitating the statistic even after she was corrected, and it turned out I was correct, so just wanted to post the proof in here. Pearl speaks on men valuing attractiveness, purity. Hey, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You guys tell me. I'll I'll research it and readjust. Cause it is what it is. We're all learning here. So and youth and says in order to get a high value husband or husband at all, you should be those things. Men value purity and youth. Yeah. Purity, youth, beauty. Pearl fails to meet these standards herself, despite Oof. wanting to get married so badly. She's really Apparently, cool. if I want results in life, I have to start talking to boys. Yeah, wife me up if you're, if you're in the London area. Oh. That literally reminds me of all the women on her her um, her podcast type thing, and just like wife me up. <laughs> In terms of purity, Pearl's not a virgin. In fact, she's so reluctant to say her body count that she's willing to just lie. How many people have you slept with? Do you hear this out? <laughs> no. You ask everybody that. And you don't say your own number? What? Um, no, I don't ask everyone. I don't think I've ever asked. No, I don't even ask body count. Would you say your body count? I, I don't know. No. No. <laughs> no, I don't even ask. Um, 
I always say, how many bodies is too many bodies? So I have a question. Would you guys say your body count? No. So if it doesn't matter, like, why don't people just say it? She chose to lie because she felt embarrassed. Yep. And despite Pearl sure preaching about the importance of women's chastity, Pearl actually wanted to partake in hookup culture. But I swear to God, like, guys don't try to sleep with me. Really? <laughs> like, 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 I swear to God, I've been on a date and I, w I would have been dead. And you just never tried. I was like, oh, okay. I've been on a date, so the guy didn't even touch me once. Yeah. Damn, that's, that's a little cringe. It's actually quite cringe. Ah, oh, man. He uh, just me once and I'm like, yeah. Hey, I don't really have guys approach me often. It, it could be the clothes. It seems like she barely knew him and wanted to hook up with him, but he didn't want to. So according to Pearl, I guess we shouldn't be taking her advice considering that she can't attract men even for casual encounters. Ooh. I've noticed a lot of therapists. See, that's where I get her, I get where Brittany's a little bit wrong. There's two two categories. There is the casual encounter category and there's the wife category. Not saying this is true or what it is. He could have put her in the wife category. That's why he didn't sleep with her right away. He could have. Or she just didn't meet any of his standards and he was like, fuck that. That's also possible are like older single women and i'm kind of like if you can't maintain a relationship why would i take advice from you <laughs> i'm just this is just something i've noticed um but i again i haven't spent a ton of time in therapy but then like and then i'm like yeah like why would i take advice from you if you can't maintain a relationship and she thinks what's holding her back is the fact that she's like six feet tall i would say if there's one thing that's held me back in that's, dating that's it is the factor. height but i think it's because of her desperation and they can sense it <laughs> along with her low standards and you know if a guy has all the like all the things that you look for he might cheat yeah so how can i how can i be that mad if he cheats when it's like i picked him mm. would you accept if he's just stepping up but not uh, getting anyone pregnant are you're we married in, no you're in a relationship i think if i'm being truly honest with myself for the right guy i probably would how many times i don't know how many times does... she's basically announcing to the world hey i'm pearl i'll tolerate cheating please marry me so imagine Pretty the much. kind of men she's attracting and it seems like her dating life in general just has not gone well he was older than me oh okay so he he did girlfriends before me Two weeks after, like, we ended it, mm -hmm. he starts dating a new girl. Like, I think he's going to marry that girl or did. I don't really know. Yeah. yeah, I was, like, obsessed. I was so sad because I I felt like I waited because I was almost – I was a sophomore in college when I lost my virginity. So I was, like, halfway okay. through college. It's late. Yeah. You know it's not about you. It's – I'm, I'm going to drop something. It's the timing. Well, no, no, no. It actually, it was because he literally like went on to marry the next girl. So something. But it's funny because no. the girl, the girl was older than me. So by the manosphere's perspective, like I would have won. Pearl even acknowledges that things don't work out as they do on paper, but she no. continues to influence people to do immoral pathological behaviors in order to demonize women for clicks and views. In Pearl's world, if the wife puts the husband in question in a bad position and takes this kid away then it's her fault it only takes one time to to ruin a guy's life where she can literally take half and take the kids I like agree. how is he supposed to protect the how is he supposed to protect the children when legally she can take them and she's paid to take them away from yeah. him but that same empathy is nowhere to be found if the wife is put in a bad position by the husband correct okay so then you pick guys that cheat but it says something about your decision making if you become a single mother if the woman leaves it's because she's just trying to take the man's money because she's an unreasonable home wrecking gold digger she can take them and she's paid to take them away from yeah. him. But if a woman decides to make her own money, well, now she's emasculating her husband and causing the divorce. Or right, one of the number one reasons for divorce is... Uh, you're, 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 you're pushing it on the two extremes, Brittany, on this particular one. Financial and also when women out earn men. The irony of Pearl dehumanizing women on her channel is that her entire channel's premise is to focus on the injustices against men and how women aren't empathetic enough to them. And Pearl doesn't like when this happens to her. For example, Pearl went on a podcast and told her story about how her male role model in her life 
Her coach who worked one-on-one -on -one with her since she was 14 turned out to be a groomer. Because I remember saying like, you can tell me stuff you don't, like you don't tell your parents. I remember looking at him like a dad, like for a while, because I saw him so much. He, he told me before I went to college, like that I was gonna get a bunch of attention from boys because of my butt. And as soon as she turned 18, he tried to sleep with her and shove alcohol down her throat, which by the way, for those of you that don't know, the legal drinking age in America is 21. And he's like, oh, come take a Ruthless. shot at the gym with me. So I think I was 18 or 19 when this happened. And at first I was like, oh no, I'm not trying to drink tonight because it was like my finals week. That was why I was home. But he kept like, going at it then so he goes you know like hannah because my first time's hannah i mean this is a pretty bad story so i wouldn't really want to make fun of a story like this yeah. the gym the gym's empty right now we could do anything you want i'm like what, what do you mean marcus he texted me so he said um he said come back to the gym tonight and i said for what and then he said like um nothing just sex the issue I had was he was waiting till girls turned 18 to try to hook up with him. A couple years later, I find out he is going to be a coach at my high school on the track team. And my sister is going to run track. So I was like, oh, hell no. But I actually didn't. I didn't get him fired till years later because my mom told me not to. And then in the interview, she goes on to talk about how the Manosphere blamed her for this, even though her coach was double her age. Like I can tell they're from the Manosphere comment because I've told this story on like a TikTok before yeah. and th it's weird they blame you like they put the you the so, 17 18 year old uh, yeah I can like why I did can you put yourself in that situation or you <clears throat> liked the attention da, 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 da. pearl has firsthand kids are naive kids are very naive especially with adults that they trust this is why you shouldn't let adults that are bad around children because they will take advantage of children it is what it is. Experience in the consequences of demonizing the other gender. And considering she went through something so terrible, you would think she would be empathetic. I but agree. instead, she's so profit driven that if somebody else told her this same story, she would side with the predator. She seems to give no nuance and yeah, I've seen no that. defense of women, no matter what the situation is, even if what happened happened when they were children. I'm pretty sure social media is like some of the most damaging stuff for young girls in middle school and high school because of how much like information they're bombarded with in terms of beauty standards and how they look. But you guys are like, well, but Instagram helps them get flown out to Dubai. So I think like <laughs> it does. You know, it's like totally, totally disconnected from like the real world. I mean, it also lets you catfish the hell out of men <laughs> like with these freaking Instagram filters. It's based mm -hmm. on the media that they consume and the mm -hmm. thing images around them. Like that's just like, absolutely boo, true. Freaking who? Like what happened to the accountability? She's holding the kids more accountable than she she's holding the men for not checking if it's a real person or not. Maybe it's because she's biased and she got catfished. I don't know. So yeah, clearly Pearl has no issues holding even little girls accountable <laughs> over men. And when it comes to women, Pearl will say things like, you shouldn't talk about the exceptions, only talk about the rule. You know, some people mm -hmm. might get married and the husband dies mm -hmm. and they become a single mother. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, right, there's... But we're not talking about exceptions. We're talking about the rule. Are the majority of single mothers widows? No. But that changes at Pearl's convenience. You can't talk about nuances. I noticed, unless I noticed this in the red pill space. And as soon as it's the other way around, they will go on to nuances themselves to fight an argument. And I'm just like, you just did exactly what feminists would have done. So. It demonizes women. You've never heard of cases where women don't let the dad see the kid. No, Earlier, you said never, we were going to talk never. about exceptions. You want to talk right. about the rules. So no, don't give me okay. the hide and go seek no. with the kid. How I mean, often do you think a mom is hiding the kid from the I, husband? Give me a percentage. Um, I don't know. Before on her channel, she actually used to be more nuanced and actually criticized the manosphere for not acknowledging exceptions. You know, I know that one girl that makes more money than her husband or whatever the exception is to the rule. Um, and we see it, I think, more often than the manosphere really gives credit to. I think in general, men don't want to date single mothers. But I know a lot of single mothers that got remarried. She was even willing to have her virgin friends come on the show to explain their perspective and why they wouldn't sleep with someone with a high body count like the host of Fresh and Fit. I'm probably going to have a couple friends that I waited till they were married to have on my podcast to actually talk about what they look for in guys. Then only a month later, 
She starts regurgitating manosphere talking points. If you get married and it doesn't work out, like women... Damn, she looks pretty manly in this particular clip. Or am I just being an asshole? <laughs> can and will take all of your money. Pearl doesn't like when you go, but men, in response to her. And whenever we talk about where the women need to improve, we always need to point the finger at the men. But the reason people go, but what about men, is because she doesn't seem to address the other half of the equation. Women haven't single-handedly made men. Well, on this one, it's because, I mean, the, the, log the reasoning is because women have their own spaces. They speak about their own issues constantly. Men don't get to talk about our issues so much, but when we speak about our issues, women always interject their issues or use, you know, their our issues to kind of bring it back in. No, no, give or take on that one. And she cause obesity or cause divorce, but Pearl will take it and spin in a way to where women are the blame and men don't take any accountability for it. For example. 80% of women initiate divorce is something she will say in order to blame women. But women initiating divorce doesn't necessarily mean that they were in the wrong. If it were the correct. other way around, I just know that Pearl would spin it as men are leaving modern women because they're low value. I mean, she already <laughs> does this with passport bros. Are Western mm. women typically known <laughs> as good wives? Are they sought after all over the world? Or are oh, this one's us. You know, like we, we deal with passport bro stuff a lot on my channel, so I would agree. Most women in other countries, especially non Western countries, have a little bit more traditional values and in men's eyes are a little bit more valuable in their sexual market value. Are men getting their passports and going elsewhere? It's not 100% of the woman's fault, and if you don't address even the 10% of the time where it's the man's fault, then you're not really solving anything. She's radicalizing people because she's making them mad about problems while giving them no solutions, and it's not really helping anyone. That's why I try to be solution-oriented, at least here, you know, like, if, yeah, you guys want to do mid-towel? We just show you guys stuff that why it's perfectly fine to be mid-towel, right? You know, you guys want still a family and you don't want to be in the West? We got passport bros, right? You know, if you want a family and you still want to do, deal with here, we got to improve ourselves. We got to go to the gym, get good jobs. It is what it is. And as she makes things worse, she just gets to sit there and collect money off of people's negative emotions. Pearl asserts that her focus on addressing women exclusively is due to the fact that they're never held accountable. Because she's holding women solely responsible for every issue, she's just perpetuating the issue that she claims to be trying to solve. If she had- Yeah, if we, we really talk about how, or no, we don't talk about it, but they say like the red pill is to definitely the opposite of uh, feminism and Pearl's channel is actually a very good example of how the red pill is literally the opposite of feminism had a more balanced consideration of everyone then perhaps she would actually get something solved I she agree. does this a lot by misrepresenting statistics in order to poorly portray women for example Pearl talks about how 20% of men aren't even the father of their children and they say that 20% of men are raising a kid that's not theirs that's why they don't want a promiscuous woman they're afraid they're going to pass the resources onto the wrong um onto a kid that's not theirs well, unknowing or knowing not knowing. not knowing so how do they get the statistic? I don't know. It's DNA test. Much like the feminist that Pearl criticizes, I've never seen her cite where she gets her data from. And that's the same thing as lying in the science world because... Uh, it's actually from the documentary of Red Pill. The people that deal with um, paternity tests and paternity fraud literally say one-fourth to one-third of men that go through this process are not the father so through that standard i would i would agree with pearl and yeah she doesn't really quote the where it's from but through the red pill documentary and the gentleman in the red pill documentary he states it pretty 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 greatly because she's making it impossible to even fact check her i have to just guess what study she's talking about and i think she's basing it on this 1999 report it's by the American Association of Blood Banks, and it's over two decades old, which is way too old for a study like this to be relevant. 
And the 20 No, I think it's even more relevant now because society is even worse and women have had more power. So at that rate it was 30%. Do you think the numbers got better, Brittany? And that that one you're a little bit off. I don't think the numbers have gotten better over the 20 years. I think it's gotten worse. So that 20 30% still holds pretty true. 20% claim that Pearl May doesn't actually represent the population. It's actually much lower. They were testing men that were already not sure if they were the dad, meaning that the study was biased. In order for it to not be biased, it would have to be randomized or tested at birth. The vast well, differences in non-paternity rates across different populations is See that would never work. Paternity tests at birth. I don't see that happening. I guess this is, could be yes because of that, but there's also the 23 and Me incidents where parents are going to try to give, you know, blood or a kidney or whatever to their kids and they have to do a blood test and it ends up being negative. That actually happens about one third of the time. That is technically randomly selected. There's not people that already think that they're going to have uh or the thing that there's not going to be their child already these are just people just going about their day trying to save a life just to save their child's life and then they find out that it's not it's also not taken into account this is relevant information especially considering that pearl's podcast is based in london even though she's from america so how are we supposed to know where she's yeah, that, even talking that's about? the part that's Depend kind of difficult with her where she gets the numbers from london and then from u.s I mean, I'm from U.S., so I don't really care about London stats too much. So, Depending on what country you're looking at, the percentages are all different and significantly lower than what Pearl was saying. Another example mm. of Pearl misrepresenting data in order to demonize women is her saying that women primarily divorce men for money. Yeah, I want to get married. Of course I want to get married. but like I mean, I wouldn't say for money, but money is the issue. I mean, there's always finance is usually the number one reason. Like if I was a guy, I would have a really hard time with it. And you could say it's the type of woman, but 50% of marriages end in divorce. Women leave the majority of the time. I don't think it's the type of woman. I think it's that they're paying women to leave. Or one of the number one reasons for divorce is financial and also when women out earn men. But the top reason for divorce on every site that I've checked didn't have that as even the top four. And while I was researching this, I actually found data citing that women who divorced in the previous 12 months were more likely than recently divorced men to be in poverty, 20% compared to 11% respectively. If I were doing what Pearl does, I could easily utilize that data to say that 80% of women are leaving men because men can't satisfy women. But hey, at least I'm telling you where I got the data from, unlike her. I would have thought someone as rich as her would have the resources to be able she to check wealthy. the statistics she's saying, especially considering she's on her dad's dime. Number one, I'm sorry I'm not a brokey. My dad yells at me for accounting every month and I have to like organize like business expenses versus personal. Um, so my dad does yell at me when I pull out cash because you can't see what you spend it on. Pearl reminds me of Pearl from Spongebob. You're 26 and your dad literally still monitors your accounts in and out. God damn. God damn. Um, asking her dad, Mr. Krabs, for money. How much is all this costing me? Here's the receipt. <laughs> I order. Oh, daddy, you got me everything I wanted. She also reminds me of Mr. Krabs' daughter because he wants her to be a star and he's paying her way to do so. Being a little YouTuber Damn, is tough. I'm really tired of being broke, dad. And she's a whale. I can't mooch off of you forever. <laughs> My little girl is finally a star. Give me a K, are you? I'm sure that Pearl understands the real world struggles of the average person from her 10 bedroom mansion. You guys wanna- With the water slide? the house tour? <laughs> But clearly there is one thing that money cannot buy. It's a man. And that thing is taste. This oh. video is from Pearl's channel called Wife School. In the first episode, she and Allie, known as Real Femme Sapien on YouTube, meet up to improve on Pearl's fashion 
along with a male stylist who is supposed to be helping Pearl attract a husband by improving her outfits. So let's take a look at some of the outfits he puts her in. Perfect for a night out on the town. I'll do the full twirl. <laughs> this dress looks like a trash bag. It's unflattering on her because it's showcasing her stomach, which is not what she should be highlighting. Not only that, but the black is washing her out, making her look very drained, especially considering the fact that she normally doesn't wear makeup. Going without makeup is a personal choice and it's fine, but if you're gonna do that, you need to know your color palette or you will look even more tired. All right, man, we're about to learn about color palettes so you can dress a little bit better. Tired and sickly, <laughs> when you wear the wrong colors. I'm gonna go ahead and explain a little bit of color theory to you guys. Color season is a system that utilizes color theory to categorize where each person falls under in order to easily find out what colors look good I guess on I'm them. An autumn. It's based on how their skin's undertones interact with other colors, and that involves how light or dark their skin is relative to the hair and eye color. If you have warm undertones in your skin, you'll look more yellow with green veins in your wrist. And if you're cool tone, you'll look more pinkish or reddish with blue veins on your wrist. If you have a oh, warm have undertone, you should wear warm colors. If you have cool undertones, cool tone colors will suit you best. You have to have a trained eye to be able to see it in some cases, but Pearl is cool toned as you can see with her pink flush in her skin. Pearl is- Fuck all this, that's why I just wear black. Black works for most things, at least for my skin color. Yes, I guess if you have as pale as Pearl, it probably would not be as great. It's either a light summer because of her cool tone coloration or she would be a light spring because it's right next to light summer in the color wheel it's a little hard to tell on the internet but i know for sure she's on that side of the color wheel if you look at someone and the first thing you see is their outfit's color instead of their own natural coloration and features then you're wearing the wrong colors the stylist doesn't apply this knowledge or even utilize basic color theory and instead he takes her to a cheap fast fashion store i guess i could tell by her 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 shirt it's a very matched with her skin tone like zara she's a lighter if he skin were color. actually good at his job he would not be making these mistakes if money were an issue which clearly for pearl it's not there are better budget friendly places you could go to for higher quality clothes for example go thrifting but yeah clearly pearl doesn't need to go thrifting he could have just taken her to a higher end mall or a department store honestly he just does her dirty the entire time that's super cool that looks really nice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what kind of, where would i go with she looks like a tarzan and jane kind of thing in this one with this outfit i think you know i think that could be an afternoon i think that could be an evening outfit i mm -hmm. think you could, you could go out in shoreditch wearing that you could go to canary wharf to one of the bars down there mm -hmm. meet some nice high value guy he looks at her with a straight face, telling her she's going to meet a high value guy in this outfit. Oh, it'll look nice going out for errands and having a nice dinner. He's just talking out of his ass. So what do we rate this, one to 10? <sighs> I reckon it's a high eight. Like, what? I don't know how a stylist like a can four. honestly rate Maybe these outfits so high. Oh, All right, that's good. now it, now it's good. Talking. Now it's good. Spin, spin after fast, okay. <laughs> He must think that she's a dumpster because he keeps putting her in trash bags because he's done it now like three or four times in this video and he's not highlighting any of the flattering parts of her body, which defeats the entire purpose of having a stylist help you. There are several different body shapes, but for Pearl, she holds most of her weight proportionately in her arms and in her stomach. And that should have been taken into consideration when he was dressing her. Regardless if she... Damn, she's ruthless. Like, destroying this stylist is like, uh, professionalism and, uh, skill. <laughs> loses weight, her proportions will stay the same relative to her other body parts. You can bring balance back to the body by drawing the attention to the most attractive body parts and away from the least that attractive ones good. using color, patterns, texture... But of course, he would know that if he actually knew what the hell he was doing as a stylist. It is honestly just so frustrating watching him not look smacks her. In this outfit, the skirt does not work. Pearl could have put on some jeans with a wider cut at the bottom to balance her upper, heavier half, 
or she could have put on a skirt that was A-line, high-waisted, and above the knee, but in middle of the thigh, not too short, would have done the trick to bring attention to her legs and away from her stomach. Like I'm pulling in the back because what the fuck it's is too this? big. That is, though, a size aside, that is, that's pretty cool, but that is proper like New Year's Eve party type. Yeah, should I wear yeah. for New Year's Eve and get us fitted? Or let yeah. Me pass. yeah. You see how he literally highlights her stomach with bright green sparkles? <laughs> I, I can't take this anymore. And then he has the audacity. He must got it from Pearl. The audacity to suggest for her to tailor a Zara dress that won't survive one wash. Literally go watch a fashion <laughs> channel. Go watch Ali Art on YouTube and then come back to us when you actually know how to do your job. And it's not just her frumpy style that's preventing her from looks maxing. It's also her presentation with her hair. She's not bothering to style it. And many people are even commenting about it under her TikTok telling her to brush her hair. Girl's Ooh. hair just needs a haircut with some texturing to give it volume so that it's not so stuck and flat to her head. Her hair is very manageable. Damn, those two how is she going different. to teach other women how to attract a husband when she doesn't even put the minimal effort in her own appearance? No, I've noticed a lot of therapists are like older single women. And I'm kind of like, if you can't maintain a relationship, why would I take advice from you? <laughs> so if she wants to be taken seriously, she should care about her overall presentation, including her fashion hairstyle, her attitude, and bodily self-care. This situation is so deeply embarrassing and desperate. She has no business telling other women how to attract a husband. I wanted to give Pearl credit for trying to improve on her fashion, but she makes it really hard to do so when even months after this video, she continues to show up on camera with her hair undone, unbrushed, stuck to her head, no volume, and having naughty stains on her clothing. So I'll just have to instead She call them naughty stains. <laughs> I just realized this. <laughs> give Pearl credit for trying to learn how to cook on her wife's school channel because it appears she does not know how to. She hasn't been able to attract the men she wants to hook up with her. She hasn't been able to attract a boyfriend and she doesn't even live by her own standards about presentation. You know who else doesn't adhere to their own standards and the gender they're attracted to isn't attracted to them? Male feminist. Pearl reminds me a lot of a male feminist. She uses a lot of their tactics, such as misrepresenting statistics. But unfortunately, we still live in a broken system that says that my work as a white male is worth 46 cents more to the dollar Jesus, than an equally cents. qualified Hispanic woman. Pearl is willing to accept degrading behavior like being cheated on because she is desperate to attract men. Yeah, that male feminist thing. I've known a few that were real creeps. They put these women on a platform and worship these women and they don't run fast. They can't pick things up. They're not attractive. So they try to, they're little weasels. They're trying to find another way in. Pearl doesn't know how to attract men with her social skills, her appearance, or with skills like cooking. What percent of women have cookbooks? It's probably because we have the internet for recipes now, Pearl. But yeah, basically I- That was the other thing I always like, like, when she always asked that cookbook question, I was like, I don't have a cookbook. I just look shit up on the internet. <laughs> like, oh, I want to make this. Let's make some pho. All right, got to get this, this, and this. All right, that's it. <laughs> What do you need a book for? <laughs> I think that Pearl has had to resort to these desperate behaviors because she does not embody what men are attracted to. So she has to do things like agree to men cheating on her and degrading herself in order to get a man. It's very desperate. I am not like those other guys. <laughs> And back to her business really quick in regard to her tactics. Her tactics remind me a lot of legacy media in how she fear mongers people in order to make money. I have watched a lot of Pearl's content and I've never seen her give a point to the other side. There is a huge lack of nuance when it comes to her channel. I in do fact, agree. anytime someone on Pearl's show. Like even with Fresh and Fit, they never really go through nuance either, but nuances are there wants to give nuance, she will not let them do so unless it benefits men. 
if we spent this podcast talking about the exceptions, we'd be here all day. We didn't even get nowhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. there would be no point in having a conversation. We still need to mention them. Yeah, why? There's no, no point. No, we there don't. Add to the and she will go as far as to bait her guest into giving more polarizing, extreme answers. Whose beauty standards are higher, men or women? I think it depends. Mm-hmm. Okay, wait, I want to make a rule. No, it depends. <laughs> Pick one and tell me uh, why. Pearl has gained the entirety of her 1 million subscribers from her fear mongering, lies, and black and white thinking over just this past year. Pearl teaches men to act like hyper selfish sociopaths, luring them down the dark path of loneliness, unhealthy relationships, and broken homes. Men taking her advice will result in the same situations that she criticizes women for. Pearl also doesn't teach women to have healthy boundaries, also leading them to the same fate. Taking Pearl's advice will reward you in a- Yeah, it's- She doesn't seem to really, like, help women out, especially the women that come on her show, like, to, to try to understand things. She really just wants to shelf points in their faces and then have them say stupid shit majority of the time. I mean, as men, you know, we do enjoy women saying stupid shit, but just saying. A worldview as warped as hers with black and white thinking in our grayscale reality. Yeah. Like, you're going to be okay with what he does. He's going to be okay with what you do. Mm-hmm. That has nothing to do with masculinity or femininity or anything like that. That's just like two adults having a relationship, figuring out what the boundaries are. You guys talk about things that are basic relationship norms, but you like frame them in the most toxic way possible. I don't understand. If you do take one piece of advice away from Pearl, let it be this. No, I've noticed a lot of therapists are like older single women. And I'm kind of <laughs> like, if you can't maintain a relationship, why would I take advice from you? <laughs> this video took so long to make. I have never researched so much for a video before. So if you do like the content and appreciate me researching her, watching her content for two weeks, consider supporting me on Locals or on Patreon because I am community funded. Thank you so much to my producers on Patreon. And also, if you guys haven't noticed yet, I have deleted the tweet on my Twitter, so I should be back on Twitter when this video comes out. I figured that I could do more good on the platform. Mm. Ruthless, ruthless. You know, again, we don't, I don't talk about Pearl too much. So much things have been going on with Pearl. That MTR thing was huge. And then when Aber preached it, her video i just had to do her video too fucking hilarious please like and subscribe down below i'd really appreciate it i'll catch you guys next time it's chow time